Hello, everyone. I'm Yamino, the artist of Sister Claire, and I'm joined tonight by... The one, the only, the incredible, the indelible, Ash Barnes. I write the missing moments, and I help Eleanor write the comic. And I'm sorry if I sound muffled. My mouth is full of nuts. Not the not safe for work kind of nuts. <laughs> the, like this cashews. is not that kind of live stream. Not these nuts. Oh, yes, uh, I am... <laughs> this is David. What I'm... is your tagline? Yamino's brother, Dutiful David. <laughs> Dutiful <laughs> David. <laughs> David the Dutiful. The Dutiful, the beautiful David Barberich. That's your tagline <clears throat> from now on. Zach asks if I'm feeling better. Unfortunately, not really. Um, <clears throat> I'll probably lose my voice in and out through this stream, just like I did through the last one. Uh, and I will attempt not to cough a lot. So sorry if I do in advance. Well, thank you for asking. There's not a file name that people can see, is there? Nope, that was why I closed the video. That's yes, okay. Oh, it seems like there might be some stuff under these keys because I am having trouble getting it to uh, register them. Mm -hmm. That is really quite unfortunate. But, um,. Uh, I had an idea for something that I think a lot of people may find interesting. Um, how to draw, oh wait, what's going on here? Why is this? Why is this? Um, how to draw the same face in different angles. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that people could find interesting, especially if you are a aspiring <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Eleanor! No! Eleanor! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the video again. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Let me turn this off um, really quick. Make sure there's no more sweaters. <laughs> Eleanor! I regret missing. Did anyone you. see? <laughs> Has anyone seen it? Elena, no. Oh no, I'm gonna have to bleep that out of the video. Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm I don't back. think anyone actually saw it. Okay, good, 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 good. You had to really be paying attention. Okay, but anyway, I was gonna say, so I think this may be of particular interest to anyone who is maybe an aspiring comic artist who doesn't know how to go about drawing. Like, say you've done a really nice character study drawing of a character's face from one angle, but you want to be able to draw them reliably from multiple angles. Well, usually what I do if I have trouble drawing a certain character is I give them a turnaround, or if they have, like, an outfit that I may not necessarily be able to remember off the top of my head, I'll just do, like, a little reference sheet for them. Especially helpful if you want to draw them standing next to other people and you don't um, want to mess up their heights. You could do a height chart like I did uh, for Sister Claire. Um, and this is a little more detailed than the height chart, which is just silhouettes. Um, and this is a new character design who I've only drawn one time. This is him right here. And I'm not really accustomed to drawing guys, so I'm going to try to draw him from a couple different angles and try to get a better feel of him. Hmm. Laura asked, is this guy from The Missing Moments or the comic? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. You've kind of... Uh, I'm not even gonna say anything. Ash is waving at me. Don't give Laura any hints because she... I'll will... give you nothing, Laura! <laughs> nothing! 
I'm not going to pull an ash. <laughs> <laughs> if you give Lara the slightest inch. Not even a crumb for you, Lara. <laughs> if you give her the slightest inch, she will take the yard. <laughs> take the mile is the, the phrase, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Hell. Give an inch, take a mile. That's our Lara. Okay. <laughs> but no, I have supreme faith in her deductive reasoning. So... Okay. <clears throat> no, David, there's a ton more in the fridge. So please eat the carrots to your heart's content. Oh, but I I added these lines here to help me um draw all of the different facial features at the same height on the face as I turn it around. So this is like the top of the eye line and the nose line. This is the bottom of the nose here. And uh, this is the bottom of the chin and the top of the hair. Technically the top of his head is closer to like here. Yeah, I'm having some like sticky key problems going on here. I may need to try to vacuum my keyboard later. Let's see if that helps. What is it? <clears throat> I will say nothing. <clears throat> Ash? No. What? What? I did nothing! I'm just looking at you. I did literally look at me. I have done I'm nothing. I'm looking at you. What? Witty pun here said, Lara sees plot points from a mile away. Writers hate her. Here's her secret. <laughs> this writer does Writers not, hate her. <laughs> right, this writer definitely does not hate Lara. This writer absolutely loves Lara. Although, can never get anything past her, which is sometimes frustrating. <laughs> I 
don't actually like this dress. I don't know why I keep doing it. Hmm. Love yourself, Ash. Well. <clears throat> I don't know if I like how I draw this way up here. Hmm. Does anyone have any questions for Elena or for me? Or for David? Arwen says, if Hanabi is reappearing, does this mean we'll get a Hanabi wallpaper? Please say yes. Oh, we could maybe do a Hana wallpaper. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I have thought about doing Hanabi wallpapers before, but then they got replaced with a different idea. Mm -hmm. That would be a good one for July. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that was actually what I had planned to do once I was going to do her for July, but ended up doing, um, maybe, I think it was Claire with Fireflies or something. <clears throat> At the time, Hanabi was such a minor character that I was like, I don't know, it's kind of just for me, really. <laughs> I didn't think she had enough of a fan base, but now that she's featured a lot more, I think that it would be definitely worthwhile to do some for her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Laura's asking, can egg turn into an egg? No. Eggs bird soda is togetic. <laughs> Does this look like him? Did I do a good job of keeping him consistent, you think? I think so. Matt says, in the last live draw, you mentioned that Kat and company planned for the pain baby to be Claire's way of absorbing shard pain, but the mega shard caused Claire to grow horns instead. Why did this happen? Why didn't Claire react to Mega Kitty by giving birth? Actually, Matt, one of your statements isn't quite true. Kat and company didn't plan for the pain baby to be Claire's way of absorbing shard pain, but to get something out of her some of which was shard pain, the rest of which was something else. Something Happening in Oz. Oz. <laughs> Happening in Oz. <laughs> uh, yeah, but in any case, um, <clears throat> um, Claire didn't react to Mega Kitty by giving birth because she wasn't trying to expunge something from herself. She was trying to pull something into herself inadvertently like her her thought process wasn't I'm going to go yank all the bad stuff out of that thing it was I'm I must help it which translated into I am going to go yank all the bad stuff out of that thing um, and it had to go somewhere which would not have gone to the quotation mark baby quotation mark it turned into horns 
Ah, Laura says, is the something else in Claire A still there, B the thing Gabby alluded to in Reprimand? Both. <laughs> C, A and B. <laughs> oh, hi, Undine. Hello. I should have... Mm, well, hang on, let me stop chewing this mouthful of mediocre pastry. Mm. I'm mm. eating a mediocre pastry. Because I desire it. Only eat good things. Mm. I have been eating carrots. Those are tasty. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even saying don't eat pastries, I'm just saying don't eat something that you don't even enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not enjoying it. David, do you want it? You might like it more than me. <laughs> Plop into David's palm. Yeah, I'll eat more carrots. Those are a lot tastier. It's okay. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world, but... <clears throat> but I should have said this earlier. Hi, everyone. We're all really happy to see you. Mm -hmm. We've missed you during our break. And we will see you... Monday so with something that's going to knock your socks right off. I have been working really hard on um, the next missing moment. Ellen has been working super hard on comic pages and character designs and so much stuff. It's going to be awesome. I think y'all will really enjoy it. <clears throat> we scripted all of chapter one book three mm -hmm. in one sitting at a coffee shop and we were just like volleying back and forth ideas and it was like oh, what a thing what a thing oh my god and then that ties into this and this can be the chapter cover holy shit yeah. <laughs> we were like super saying it out <laughs> yeah, with, like the power level it's, it's over 9,000 <laughs> yeah. it was amazing <laughs> Oh. We started off with, like, an idea that I thought was, like, eh, kind of meh. I was, like, that's not really an exciting leap into the story. And then I am yeah, I'm not going to spoil, but I think you're really going to love it. I gave Elena two options for the start of the book. I was, like, well, we could do this thing, which is what I think people are expecting. And I said, or we can do this other thing, which no one is expecting and which will be amazing. And Elena and I were both just, like, flipping out. So it's going to be good. I think y'all will like it. Just for the record, I had some really great ideas that were off the wall and not about babies in space. And they were good ideas and I actually liked them. Agreed. So I don't always have shitty ideas. <laughs> Sometimes I have really good ideas. Often you have really good ideas. It's like a mix of ideas that are really excellent and really, what the fuck, Elena? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the thing where, like, you tend to stumble is the execution of the good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you get to cobble them into something coherent. Although I actually did a good chunk of the scripting, like mm -hmm. the dialogue and everything. Because a lot of it, well, I, nope, I'm not even going to say. Mm -mm. Not even going to say anything more. Remember who's listening. Yep. <laughs> Not a crumb. <laughs> Not a single crumb. Not a crumb. <laughs> oh, Matt asked, can Claire get pregnant naturally? Hmm. That is a good question. I'll never find out. You'll never find out. Mm -mm. That's for the fanfics. And it's been done. It has been done. <clears throat> I really don't know about the answer to that one, Morgan. I would have to think on that quite a while. But we won't find out with Claire. Sorry.
Maybe I should do this. Hmm. Arwen Trial said, How did you gals like the fact that your lovely faces are in my senior scrapbook? I was really flattered. Same. That is so sweet, darling. Thank you. Thank you. It makes me feel famous. Famous. And fabulous. <coughs> Excuse me. Does this still look like him? I think so. I think it really does, yeah. Okay. He looks like sad, dark Jesus. <laughs> actually, like Jesus. With probably hair. actually looked, yeah. It looks bigger here than it does over there. It's not, no one's expecting you to be perfect on the first try. I want to be perfect. <laughs> no one except you. Yep. Yep. Morgan says he thinks his eyes are a little far apart. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe the time there. is. I think that fixes the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. A little better. ears are at totally different levels. And this is why it's important to draw the lines. <laughs> Stop. I'm still not sure what we have to do with this face from the same color. Maybe I'll just make it flat like that. Instead of outlining his lips. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? It looks more stylized that way. What do you think about the lips? Yeah, 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 nay. Nah. Nah. No lips? No. Nah. Flat face. <laughs> Moon face. Is that a slur? Is Moonface a slur? Where have I heard that before? I mean, it's in a lot of writing, but I don't... If it's a slur, it's. I think it's a pretty obscure one. Um, I think of <clears> myself <throat> as having a crescent, crescent moon face because of my really long chin. That's what I was referring to. So just in case it's <clears> a bad word, I was thinking about him being a moon like this. Yeah, a crescent moon. <laughs> oh my god, he really looks like one. <laughs> he kind of does. That's okay. Um... <clears throat> <clears throat> he has a different type of hand than any other character in Sister Claire. Really? Other characters tend to not really have a wrist, so it'll be like that. Mm -hmm. And he's actually got a tapered kind of wrist going like that to make oh. his hands look really big and manly. <laughs> True. Very manly and tough. tough yes. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Matt had a uh, cool question for you, Ellen. Yeah. He said, what moments in Sister Claire do you think would actually work better in an animation instead of in comic form or storybook form? <sighs> the major majority of it, to be honest. I always imagine scenes as animated and then I have to kind of translate it to comic form in my head. Something that was especially a challenge on the upcoming chapter that we were working on because... Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you why, but it just was. Not a crumb. <laughs> <laughs> not a crumb. Not a crumb. <laughs> I think I can say this without having any spoilers. There's a lot of action mm -hmm. in the next chapter. And action in particular is something that I always imagine as a film mm -hmm. or like animated. And I imagine like 
the shot choices as if it was a moving visual. And so it's especially challenging for me to break down like anything action-y <clears throat> into panels. Anything that's not dialogue or like very simple actions that can be shown kind of like a storyboard, like the thing I did for the holiday surprise, stuff like that. I believe that if I could have made Sister Claire an animation without, you know, all of the costs and the collaborative working of an animation team, I would probably have made it an animation. I went into comics because they're so accessible. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like, unlike some really talented comic creators who see everything as a comic already in their head, I kind of see it as an animation and I have to translate, which can be difficult. But it's a fun challenge. Um. I'm going to just try to draw him from some different angles now and see how he looks with some different expressions other than sad. Hmm. I think <clears throat> I think every like every action scene we have in Sister Claire, like they're all really fun for me and Elena to script, but they do provide a unique challenge in that I'm used to having a lot more room to write things out, and Elena's seeing it like a movie, and we both have to work together really hard to figure out how to translate it into a still image on a page. Like Ash will be, okay, so on this page, three things <clears throat> happen. Like the way she thinks of it, she'll be like, he picks up the ball and throws it. And I'll be like, okay, but we're gonna need a shot of the hand reaching for the ball, the hand holding the ball, a wide shot of him like swinging it across, and then another panel at the bottom of the ball flying <laughs> and hitting the wall or something. <clears throat> like. I think sometimes Ash thinks that you can fit a lot more into a page than you can, and it's surprising sometimes even to both of us when something we thought was really simple ends up taking a lot of space, a lot of comic real estate. I think, too, that there's a really important thing to have on comic pages that we, like, I'm always pushing for more of, and Ellen is more eager to get to the, like, the meat of the thing faster. Um, like, pacing... I want there to be significant pauses and like moments where you can tell the characters are just looking at each other or considering a thing or taking a moment to contemplate something. Um, I do really like those. Like, I don't think I usually argue against them unless I feel like this chapter has already been running really long yeah, or like it's been a week of just characters looking at each other significantly. Maybe we should include some dialogue here. Like, that's the other hard thing is that we're designing it for both a webcomic, which is read one page at a time, mm -hmm. and a book, which is read several pages all in one sitting. So, like, you kind of have to compromise because it's two very different beasts that you're designing for. Mm -hmm. I think, like, <laughs> I think that I focus a little bit more on how it's going to look in the long run. And, you know, both Ellen and I really do want to please readers quickly. But at the same time, when we go back and we read the book, we want, we want it to be like a nice flowing story that feels like it took its time to get to its end. Huh. 
Pacing is hard, guys. It's really hard. <laughs> and I can think I'm really good at it, and we'll have, like, a suggestion. And Eleanor and I will have the script out, and then she'll work on the page and send me something and be like, look, I condensed this thing. And I look at it, and I'm like, that's so much better than what I had in mind. And she did it in three panels. <laughs> it's like, damn. Went from 13 to 3. <laughs> A note that has happened before. When do you remember that last happening? Hmm. Oh, there was a moment in the last chapter. Um, I'd have to go back and find the page. Oh, I think it was when I made it into a montage when Claire was like running back to the others and they you were did. talking about her. I yeah. was like... What if we have these panels overlaid so we can do two scenes in one? <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. And I, I think the way you figured out how to do it was much better than what we had originally scripted. Yeah. Aw. Witty Pun here says, Ash, you wonderful wordsmith you. I was wondering, how do you get, th get through those points of slow-moving story parts when you're writing? Thanks a lot. Hmm. I guess it really depends on the kind of slow-moving part. Um, hmm. I'm the wrong writer to ask about this because I like to linger. Given the excuse, I will spend a long time describing things. You know, I'm not J. I'm not J. R. T. or anything. Um, but I'm I'm a descriptive writer, so I don't mind slow-moving parts. It's when it starts to get tedious even to me that I move on, and one of the easiest way to make a story move along to me is to have someone say something. Because then the perspective shifts to them, and you can stop describing your forest now and get into the action of the scene. But with the door, David, it has a tendency to slam. Oh, hi, Proxy. Hello. <clears throat> In reference to you um, managing to condense scenes, Zach said, but then there's the moments where it was supposed to be grass, you know. Just grass. Yes, Ellen is also really good at making things super hard for herself. I'll be like, just draw some fog in a tree. I come back and there's like a whole cityscape with like every window lovingly sculpted. And I'm like, damn it, Elena. <laughs> but now it's better. <clears throat> hmm. Jamie's got to go. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. Thanks for coming. gotten a better idea of how to draw him. Good. Like, he doesn't look perfect in every angle, but I think this is good. I'll draw him one more time. Then should we say goodnight? It is 11 and I do have other 
non-streamable work to do on chapter three. Oh, Matt said. Elena, it's a tiny detail, but as a guy with minimal chest hair, it doesn't have a V-shape on the pecs. He's magic. <laughs> I don't I don't think Elena cares too terribly much about the chest hair, Matt, but that is definitely good to know. I like that his hair oh shoot, I want the wrong word. I like that his hair has shit. <laughs> Hang on a second. Has shit. It has this kind of shape. It's important <laughs> to me. <laughs> Ash, I know what you're thinking. It's not this kind of shape, okay? That's not what I said. It's this kind of shape. Mm -hmm. I see you. I see you thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. Thinking out loud. This chest hair is shaped like a bit. <laughs> okay. Well. It's not done. You could, tr you could try some faces for the other new character if you want. I don't trust myself to open that file without revealing huge spoilers, so... You could black, black the screen again if you want to. You can think about it. Draw what we're I think I'm just going to stick with this character for now. Okay. I was just starting to get on a roll with figuring it out. I had to draw his weird beard, so... <laughs> <clears throat> I want to draw him looking happy for once, because I have not yet. Isn't he so cute? He is really cute. I know. Hmm. hmm. Matt says, hey, Ash or Elena, at some point, is there going to be any romantic drama in the comic or missing moments, like unrequited love or love triangles? Not the poly kind. Hmm. I mean, what about Gabby and her weird relationship to Claire? Is that not weird enough for you? <laughs> I really don't think, though, that Gabby has the kind of love for Claire that she did for Clementine. No, she doesn't, but that's what makes it weird, is that Claire's not her daughter. She's also not her, but she is something of Clementine. And it's a weird situation for Gabby to be in. Like, obviously, she's not going to treat Claire like she is Clementine, but she's kind of a weird echo of her. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking... Unrequited love. Yeah, there is, actually. I don't even know if it's the same kind that Matt's talking about, but, like, Rosie never quite gets what she's looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe she will in the end, but... Yeah, there's... Hmm. I'm really trying to think. There is one relationship in particular that comes to mind that I don't, this isn't really super spoilery or anything. It's been hinted at a lot in both live rights and missing moments. Um, the relationship between Abraham and Zora. Like, they both really care about each other and and yet, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, there are some things that keep them from being a thing. And I don't know if you would call that unrequited, but there is some drama there. So. Oh, 
plus, moi, du moins. C'est mon talk of voice here. Ok, moi, du moins, elle n'a pas plus. <clears throat> There's so many new people who just got here. Oh man, you should draw some of the other characters just a little bit. Oh, his eye is gonna bother me forever. <laughs> That is just all he Okay, that's you know what? Close enough. Does this even look like the same character? Yeah. You sure? I think so. I think you've made his face a little wider there. But that's the whole point of doing these, you know, to get used to drawing them. Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> Lara said. Is one of Zora and Abraham's issues that they can't be together in the same place without also becoming a giant red blinking dot attracting shards? You know, that's a really good thought, darling, but actually, no. Mine has something to do with all of them. Oh, witch burning them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, to be fair, to be fair, um, <clears throat> To be fair, Abraham's behavior toward witches is not nearly as, um, how do you say, uh, flammable um, <laughs> when Zora is still in the picture. So, like, she does still make herself a nuisance to witches who insist on going about not having a care for everyone else. But she doesn't, you know, set Abby's on fire and kill a bunch of kids. I'm going to uh, black out the screen for just a second while I open another character reference to draw a couple faces from. Okay. Okay. So do not panic. We are still here. Still here. <laughs> But Zack's right. Zora can't stay in one place for too long on her own because she is so powerful. Kiss me and light up the stars. Turn it back on. <laughs> Everything's closed. Yep. Good. Yep. Well, let me let me just check. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Okay. Budgie, which would be super, super cute. It really would. <laughs> I love this character. Mm hmm
<clears throat> the first time Elena showed her to me, she didn't give her any eye shine, and she looked like a robot. And I was like, please, give her some eye shine. Aw, Matt said she kind of looks like me. Thank you. Mm. She has bigger boobs than me. <laughs> Doesn't she? No, 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 hell no. Nope. <laughs> no, never mind. No, she does look nice. And wider hips. I, I wish I was that cute. Shit. You are this cute. Have you seen the cute shorts you're wearing today? Hmm. So cute. You would look good in this. What's ass? Ash? <laughs> Did you just call me ass? No. <laughs> ash <laughs> has a shirt, a shirt that looks a bit like this. <clears throat> it's not a sweater shirt, <clears throat> alas, because that would be really freaking cute. <clears throat> <clears throat> Budgie, it is not too late to change your um, your Patreon request, especially if we haven't designed your character yet. If you want a Budgie Witch, you can have a Budgie Witch. I would be delighted to draw a Budgie Witch. Aw, oh, Kilandra said, by the way, Ash, Yamino, it's so good to be here tonight. I've missed the last few live draws, and it's so nice getting to hear you two again. Aw. Oh. I'm really flattered. We're happy to see you. <laughs> Laura said, this character takes from my mole school of sweaters that reveal skin in weird places, doesn't she? Yeah. This style is really in. Like, I... Oh, sh <laughs> I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen so many girls lately wearing these, like, long sleeve tops that have these, like, holes right here. And, I mean, I think it looks cool. Um, but I just thought, eh, why not? Why not indeed? She also takes after the Gabrielle school of covering just one eye. Just the left eye. <laughs> Matt said she also takes after the Sister Claire school of being friggin' adorable. Aww. I think so, too. She is so cute. Sketch with it. <clears throat> Clever Pepper said, Is this a missing moments character or will she appear in the comic? Both. Both. Calandra said both. Both is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we aim to please. Oh my god. There is definitely something going on with my keyboard area here. Oh, so I wonder if there's like a cat hair or something because like I these got... keys here have been super unresponsive. After you're done with this, um, I can go downstairs and get some of that spray air. That'd be good. I have some in my office. <clears throat> hmm. 
Zack said, no, Ash, you aim to tease. Oh, well, you know. You're not wrong. Hmm. Space Budgie asks, hey, were new bird witches added to the flock after they stopped being poor drifters? Yeah, um, I'm sure that some newbies came along. I haven't written it, but I certainly could. The flock is ever fluctuating. I know that when they reached um, Throne of Mare, the flock, what? In my head when you said that, I heard, the flock is ever fluctuating. Oh my god. I know, <laughs> I know that when they reached Throne of Mare, the flock, um, I wouldn't say disbanded exactly, but they they definitely lost some members, like Goose um, got married. Shot my hunters. No. Uh, Elena, no. Huh. No, she lived happily ever after, <laughs> Elena. God. Um. <laughs> um, Goose got married. Uh, there were some other characters who went off and did some other things. And then when Eden came about, still more of the bird witches, uh, no pun intended, flocked there. So... <clears throat> hmm. Matt says, hey, Elena, is there a specific page in the comic that's infamous for being so difficult to draw? Every crowd scene ever. Mm -hmm. um, all of the, the big background scenes of the shattered city. <clears throat> this next chapter. Yeah, boy. This next chapter, <clears throat> y'all should be proud of Elena in advance because she has got some serious work to do. Yep. I think it's going to look awesome, though. It will. It'll look awesome. It's going to kill me, but it's going to look good. Aw, Kelandra said, I'm always proud of the work you guys do. Sometimes when I'd have a really bad day at work, I would think, at least there is a new Sister Claire I can read. Aw. Aw. I am glad it brings you such joy. Me too. Are there any other questions? Not that, you know, Ellen's done. I was just prompting because I felt like I should. <laughs> this is such a cute picture of her. It really is. What a good.
Hmm. That's a good question, Zach. Zach said, what was Mother Abraham trying to mold Clementine into when she was helping slash teaching her? I think Abraham's motive was mostly to help Clementine reach a point of control with her power that she could not be dangerous all the time and be miserable. Like, I mean, so she wouldn't be miserable is what I mean. Um, did Abraham hope that Clementine would join the Helsings? Maybe, but I don't think that was her primary motivation. I think she, like, I think you can assume that Mother Abraham's motives were largely altruistic in that she just wanted to help this kid who was having a hard time. Box Puppy said, If I can find a decently done crochet cat plush pattern, would you mind if I made Grim and Snowy plushies? I would be ecstatic if you made Grim and Snowy plushies. That would be amazing. It really would. Hmm. Zach said, you've said Marguerite's energia was blocked mostly by trauma. What else blocked her energia? That's a good question. Hmm. Hmm. What if I draw one more head and then we call it a night? Okay. Kalandra asks, how has our vacation been? It hasn't really been a, a vacation, dear heart. Like, I was gone for a week in Iceland, um, and I had a good time during, during my Iceland trip, but unfortunately I was sick the whole time, and both of us have been working pretty hard the entire break. Uh, coming up with new concepts, planning things. I have been working on the next missing moment, which is a very interesting missing moment, and that's all I'm going to say because I know someone who is listening who, if I say anything else, will just take it away. Um, <clears throat> but we've been, we've been doing a lot of work. I feel like we've been really productive, though, and I think y'all are going to enjoy the fruits of our labor.
<laughs> what a cute face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> That's the I have a trouble face. Mm Hmm. Matt said, when was the last new character introduction in the comic? Cog, maybe? Or, I mean, you knew Magpie from the missing moments, but, yeah. Ooh, <gasps> That face also reminds me of Amethyst a little bit for some reason. I think it's, it's the, the lips. lips. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Cute as hell. <laughs> oh, no eyebrows. No, those eyebrows are just really high. Up oh, here. oh, I see them. Yeah. Hmm. So I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all, do you have any? I know this has been kind of a short one, but it was spontaneous. And we have been here since 8.30. Um, so, does anyone have any final questions for us before we scurry away? Oh, Matt said she kind of looks like the green woman from Fantasia 2000. Mm, I can yeah, see that. She has those lips, too. I really like drawing these kind of lips. Mm -hmm. Shall we sing goodnight? Well, let's wait and see if there's any questions. Hmm. Zach says, Ash, have you gotten any warm wishes messages over the past weeks? Yeah, I've gotten a couple, and it has really made me feel good. I haven't had a ton of time to reply to them. Um, there are people who have been concerned, and I appreciate it. Space Budgie says, are we going to meet these new friends soon? So soon! Very, very, very soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mamo <Mama> voice. <laughs> Shall we sing good night? You've got a nut in your mouth. <laughs> Any last questions at last last call? Because then we gotta go. Oh, Matt said it's been so nice to hear from you again, and I hope you feel better soon, Ash. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. 
so. Good night. Good night.